Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to our first uh, session of Meet the Changemaker. Today I'm with uh, Mrs. Josephine Zige. Hi, Mrs. Zige. Hi, Dr. Jess. All the way from Nigeria. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Mrs. Zige, I'm so happy that today we have the opportunity to you know, hear from you. Um, you, I just want to start by saying thank you for uh, joining this show, Meet the Changemaker for Women in Africa. I'm Dr. Jess, and I am the host of this show. So in this show, we're gonna have, we're gonna feature a few, uh, few African women, uh, get to know the stories, who they are, so we can also, you know, because in my world, there's not enough representation of African women. And today we will start with Mrs. Zige from, from Nigeria. So why are you located in Nigeria, Mrs. Zige? Oh, <laughs> well, Nigeria is my country. Yes. First of all, thanks for having me, Dr. Jess. Good to see you again. Okay, so Nigeria is my home country. And I was born and raised here. And mm -hmm. I do work in Nigeria as well. Yes. So, so Nigeria is a big country, right? And yeah, where, where are you, you said, where are you specifically are, which city in Nigeria? Okay, right now I am actually in Bayasa State, oh. the south part of Nigeria. The southern part so of Nigeria. I'm family there. <laughs> yes, and, and Nigeria is next to Cameroon, my, my home country. So I always wanted to yeah. go to Nigeria and I love Nigeria movies and I watch them in Netflix <laughs> since I'm little. I love the music. Um, so it's a beautiful, beautiful country. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself, Mrs. Zige. Um, what do you do, you know, professionally, maybe your family? Yeah, okay. As you already know, I am Josephine Zige. Um, I'm from Nigeria, like I said before. <laughs> and um, I'm from a family of four. We are four siblings. I'm the third. I'm the third child of my family. And we have only a boy who is the last child. Okay. So I grew up in Nigeria, specifically in Port Harcourt, which is also the southern part of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I schooled there and I grew up there. So right now I'm also lecturing in University of Port Harcourt, Department of Plant Science and Biotechnology. I'm mm -hmm. in biotechnology. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> impressive. So um how was it to grow up? What, what is it to be? And today is a, a Youth International Day. So happy uh, February February 11. Do you celebrate that in Nigeria too? International yeah. Day? Is it of, yeah. of February 11 too in Nigeria? Yeah. Okay, so well, happy International Youth Day to you. I know, <laughs> I know we are young from zero to 77. So we are still young. Yeah. <laughs> Just let us know what, what, what was your life like and, you know, childhood in Nigeria in your own eyes. Oh, childhood in Nigeria. Mm, let me say that um, it was quite interesting, but though with a lot of challenges. Okay, so um, being that in my family, we are more of females, you know, we, we faced um, discrimination in, um, my mom was actually, um, you know, trading then. And they were like, you have just four children and they are all females, just a boy. So she had that in mind. She was always careful and we growing up, you know, she tried to train us like the normal African um, woman, be a girl, grow up, make good family, make good wife, um, wife to your husband and all that. So, um, you know, I grew up and I was kind of timid when I was 
much longer because I wasn't given the opportunity to, to express myself. But mm -hmm. then I was also determined inwardly that I'm going to be the best of me. Mm. So I had my, uh, I didn't tell you that I had my primary school right in my village. In the village, I finished the primary school and then um, I relocated with my dad. My mom was also shuttling Port Harcourt, which is, I told you, the southern part of Nigeria. So mm. I had to travel with my dad. And then I started secondary school in Port Harcourt. So then I realized that um, um, it's not just being this normal village girl, there is more to it. I understood what life could be. And then, then because I went to all girls school, I was actually able to meet up um, the deputy governor of my state. Then she came around because she was actually a, a student of the school, Holy Rosary Secondary School for Tarkot. And I saw her and I was, uh, I told myself, I want to be more like this kind of person, not just that village girl and all that. So mm -hmm. I finished um, secondary school, you know, and um, I was actually opportune to get into the university early. I had wanted to become a medical doctor, but I, 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 went, I wrote the, um, the jam, okay, I sat for it and I, I couldn't make the cutoff mark for it. So oh. you imagine what it means for someone to have a particular dream and you didn't meet up that dream. So I, I actually um, went into pre-degree. So it's a, it's a kind of one year program to actually um, get into the university proper for medicine as well. And I finished and I was not able to make up to um, get the cutoff mark for medicine. So I had these two challenges of not making it into medicine. So I was devastated. I was discouraged and all that. But thank God for my dad who advised me. He told me that there was um, sometimes uh, when they needed someone in geology in my local government, in my clan rather, okay that um you know they couldn't get anyone from the clan who studied geology mm -hmm. so because um the, the course i read as a um, biotechnology biotechnology wasn't a, a a first choice in nigeria okay mm -hmm. so he advised me to pick up uh, the course. so i was given plant science and biotechnologies for admission instead of medicine he advised me, encouraged me, you can be what you want to be. You know, oh. first choice is like medicine, law in Nigeria, they choose that accountancy, but these ones are just, you know, discriminated. He advised me to go ahead with, with the course. So I, I went ahead, I studied uh, plant science and biotechnology. So you can imagine the challenge. Yes. Okay. So I graduated and I, I had the dream of, studying abroad because biotechnology was um, an emerging course as a den in Nigeria, okay? Mm. So I wanted something more about it because I became interested in it. Mm. So uh, I told my parents that I wanted to study abroad and they just, they were like, we don't have the money. Hey. <laughs> yeah, we it's don't have the money. study abroad. It's abroad, yeah. So I was again discouraged, but somehow my mom managed, you know, to encourage me and I was able to get a scholarship Amen. for my master's degree. Yeah, <laughs> to study abroad. Yes. So uh, to study in the UK, so I was able to make it in 2015 to the UK to study mm -hmm. for a um, master's degree in biotechnology. So that was how I graduated. After that, I came back to Nigeria, okay? So hoping that I could get another scholarship to go back to study for my PhD because I have the passion of reaching the peak of this career that I'm in. Yeah. So I came back. Five months after I came back, there was no job, nothing for me. You know, mm. and imagine that you have no uh, hope of job and, and, and all, all of that. I was now devastated again, but I encouraged myself. And a friend of mine who was actually into MSc um, studies in, in the Department of Plant Science and Biotechnology, that was mm -hmm. where I graduated. So she mm -hmm. told me that 
um, there is an opening. They needed biotechnologies because mm -hmm. the, the department wants to undergo an accreditation. Mm -hmm. So I can come to apply. So that was how I went to apply for, for um, that position. Mm -hmm. And the long story short, I was able to get it. Because oh, once I submitted my CV and, and my application, they saw that, oh, I obtained um, a degree in biotechnology, exactly what they were looking for. Though oh. they, would, they would have paid someone that had a PhD, but because I had a degree abroad, I was mm -hmm. preferred. And that was how I got this job. Mm -hmm. And it has been very interesting. I'm enjoying it. So mm -hmm. That's a yeah. beautiful story. The beautiful story. So you've been working in that position uh, for how long yeah. now? For six years, more than six years now. More than six years now. Yeah. And are you? Do you see her plan to get yeah. a PhD? Yeah, I've, I've already started my PhD. Uh huh. Okay. In well, the same the, department. In the same department. All the best. So maybe. Yeah. Very soon. I don't know how. I mean, that PhD take a while, <laughs> but we wish you all the best on that. Yeah. And maybe next time you come and tell us more <laughs> about how was the PhD program. But this is such a beautiful story. I hear a lot of, uh, you know, overcoming challenges, which is even more important for um, us as yeah. you know African women and for the younger generation to know that sometimes it's okay to have step back. And it sounds like you have a good positive family figure who kind of encourage you and yeah. your mother made sure that you know we believe in you and that's so important and that was the same thing for me I definitely uh, have okay. very good parental support my dad my mom believing in me and it's so important yeah. for for young women for young African women even older one but especially young one because Sometimes, you know, we don't, like you mentioned, seeing that deputy, a woman leader, that really sparked yeah. an effort being to definitely achieve your dreams. So, and I hope that yeah. as they, they, you know, maybe a little girl in Nigeria, in Cameroon, in South Africa, hear your story and say, okay, you know, even if what I'm trying to do doesn't work right now, maybe this part may work and I'll keep focusing on my goal. Um, what advice would you give since it's International Youth Day to uh, the African youth, the Nigerian youth, or the young late, the young little girls in Africa, in Nigeria? What advice would you give them? Not that it's, you know, as you experience all yeah. these different challenges in life or anything you think would be important for them to keep in their heart. Yeah, you know, I, I would just tell them never to give up. Yes. You know, give, if you give up, then that, that's the step to failure. Never mm. give up, keep striving. If you yeah. have a dream, what was that dream to achieve the dream? It may take longer. I, I, I remember um, the times when I waited to study abroad. So it mm. took me about um, three years if I, when I graduated from my BSc to achieve that. Wow. Okay, so after after that again it took me some other years before i was able to enroll into phd so mm -hmm. i never gave up I, I wanted to do all of these things but they, it was very slow the process is going to be slow definitely but don't give up keep yeah. striving yeah yeah so, so that's just the basic word i'm going to use to so keep pushing Yes. Okay, be encouraged. Most times you might not get encouragement from friends, from families. Even yeah. if it comes, it won't be enough to push you up. So yeah. that inner belief, Inside. you know, is what you need. Yeah. That's great, great advice. And uh, in the meantime, um, you know, I, we also have we, have, we are women, right? So we may have yeah. to decide, you know, life is great having professional goal, educational, which is, uh, is very valuable. Yeah. In the meantime, you, you have to make choices to, to share your life. And, and if you, I mean, Mr. Zige, you, you admire Mr. Zige. So, and, and, and yeah. I, just, I just want to say that you also, and myself, I'm a married woman. So while you're doing that, you need to find your balance and maybe decide to, you know, get married or have children. So um, 
once again here without giving too much private information. So um, how do you okay. balance, you know, like your professional life, being a lecturer to university, being a married woman, and just for some to kind of have an idea because they say, oh, if you, at least in my country, I grew up being told that, yeah. oh, those women who are so educated, they can be good wife. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying that's what I grew up hearing in Cameroon, <laughs> that if, yeah. you, if you are too educated, you can be a good wife. I don't really know what other, wish we should back that up, but it was always in sense like be careful all those girls who are going to PhDs. And I have a PhD in communication <laughs> and I think I'm a good wife. <laughs> so uh, yeah, how do, you, yeah. How, how do you balance those for, you know, maybe younger girls who are thinking, oh my, can I do all that? And so. It's, it's very possible to do that. It just have to set your priorities right. First mm -hmm. of all, you know, coming from the, um, this part of Africa where we are, mm -hmm. we, the, the women are often underestimated, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I would just like to talk about one or two things before we can go into the sure. question you asked. Um, um, for a, 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 a lady, or a girl or a youth, okay, from this part of the world. You know, when you grow up to a certain age, if you, if you don't have um, that early marriage thing, mm -hmm. then you start going up chasing career, you know, and then you grow to a certain age and they'll be like, why are you not yet married? So it drops your, your emotional balance and all that. So you need to be ready for all of that challenges because of the cultural norms uh, that we have in this yeah. part of the world. So mm -hmm. Haven't actually uh, um, have in mind that you're going to achieve the peak of your career, mm -hmm. okay? And you also want to build family. You yeah. need to set your priorities right. Mm -hmm. So I was already lecturing. I, I married, um, it's going to three years now as I got married, okay? So I know that I'm going to have time for my family is a priority, my, uh, my family is a priority. And then my goals as well is also a priority. So which one comes first and at what point in time for it to come, for, for, for you to handle this um, um, family uh, and um, your, your career, you know, the balance and the education. So you have someone who have a family and then you have this person as well having a job, and then the person is actually pursuing uh, 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 academics as well. Yes. So how can you marry that? Mm -hmm. Just setting your priorities right, so you yes. pay attention to your families when need be. Mm -hmm. Also knowing that the goals that you have set at so, so, so point in time, I'm going to achieve this. But this yes. time it's for my family. This time is going to be my job, and then this time is going to be for the academic, so they can work hand in hand. No, none of them is actually abandoned or yeah. uh, 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 um, less attention is given to anyone. So at the end, at the end of the day, you see that there is a balance. Yes. And then you probably, I mean, I and I, like I said, I never really met in you know your spouse, but based on my experience, also I know I was doing my PhD. Yeah while I was going, you know, uh, you know, engaged and all that, studying my life. And, and I knew it was a very supportive fiance back then. And I know it was gonna be a supportive spouse and he still is uh, my husband. So it's, I, I, I would like just to add, I don't want to put word in your mouth, but I would just say from my experience, yeah. is that it's important to also choose someone that can share, uh, the vision yeah, of the, yeah. your dreams like they, they know that yeah. okay you want to be this type of women uh woman in the future and you even want to get a PhD so it's not like oh don't go to school again after you marry me it needs to be a mutual understanding and not hide who you want to be to this person and if it does if the person doesn't agree that probably not the right match but my assumption is men who marry women like us are definitely understanding and supporting yeah. you <laughs> because you need to have time exactly. to study. You, right? <laughs> you want to say something about that? <laughs> Yeah, uh, yes, I, I I really appreciate my husband for that. He's right. also a lecturer as well. Oh. <laughs> so I mean, 
yeah, so he, he understands what it takes to uh, be in, in my shoes. So I really don't have any challenge about that. He understands that, look, uh, look, you know, my wife, um, she needs to take care of the family. She needs yeah. to take care of her job. And she also needs to pursue her um, studies. Mm -hmm. Now, there is something that, that normally happens because I live here in um, Bayasa State and mm -hmm. I work in Port Harcourt. So it, mm -hmm. it's about two hours drive to Port Harcourt. So sometimes I travel um, as far as uh, from Bayasa to Port Harcourt. You know what that means? So I will go to Port Harcourt for work and then I will come back the same day. Sometimes I still go back to Port Harcourt the next day and I come back. So I travel four hours journey, almost oh. like three times a week. Uh, as the case may be. So being that he understands my kind of job, he 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 never complains, but he encourages me. You know, mm. he puts in everything that he, he can to help. So, and I'm really um, glad about that. Oh. <laughs> so oh. like you mentioned, like you mentioned, it's good to choose a spouse that can, that, that is supportive. Mm. That's the word. Because both ways. Yeah, if you're a young yeah. man, make sure also the young lady sees your vision, yeah. your goals. And the young ladies, make sure because it's a partnership, it's it's a friendship. So it's it's, it's definitely yeah. and and we thank God for our supportive husband, right? Um, yeah. So it, it's, it's good to mention that because personally, I grew up with my mother working as well. So some may not have not have. Uh, a working mother and so they don't yeah. know what it looks like and it's okay i mean when things ar arise we can update but right now if that's that's your goal to get an additional degree just make sure that that's something that i'm speaking to the young ladies or the young girls uh young women make sure that's something you mention and be open and choose that supportive spouse because it's yeah. we build a life together and everyone's going to benefit um, I would like also to, uh, while we are still on the topic of young lady, so you went abroad, you mentioned, I'd like to touch on that a little bit in the UK. <laughs> was it a year or two years of study? Master it was a year. It was a year. It was a year. Yeah. So how was your yeah. experience there as a young Nigerian? <laughs> was, last time it was your first time abroad and you were ready yeah, to Yeah, it was. <laughs> Yeah, um, it was an in interesting experience, you know, I was able to meet with diversity of people from India, China, um, I had a Cameroon friend as well, I didn't tell you that, <laughs> <laughs> from Egypt, so oh, wow. it, yeah, it was fun, you know, I, I had always imagined how it was going to look like for me to study abroad and then um, you have um, Western education, you know, the, the, something different from what I was exposed to. So yeah. traveling abroad, I, I, of course, I had a ch uh, several challenges, like, um, you know, adapting to the weather and all that. <laughs> to the weather well, conditions. The right now. I'm sure you're not missing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so I had high hopes. Of graduating, okay. I, I even wanted to graduate with um, a distinction. Why well, I made a merit, but I'm not discouraged, <laughs> you know. So uh, we, we actually mixed up with this group of people. We are about 15 in our class doing MSc in biotechnology, and I, I learned a lot about um, um, the people from China, India, Cameroon, Egypt. We had a British, and then we have about three Nigerians from a different um, part of Nigeria, one from the West and the other from the North. So mm. there, there was a diversity of people and then of learning as well. So not just um, learning what I went for, I also learned other things, character, and um, it built me up. It shaped, it shaped my belief, mm -hmm. okay, <laughs> about uh, others. You know, mm. sometimes we, we stay back and we think that uh, um, uh, uh, people outside there are actually better than us in maybe mm -hmm. uh, a culture or in intellectual city yeah. and all that. But mm -hmm. mixing up, I, I was able to, to actually, you know, identified with the fact that we are not different kind of people, yes. irrespective the of the color. Yeah. Yes. 
so I'm, I'm not thinking that because I'm, I'm a black, I am different, totally different from the white. So I was able to, you know, learn that. And yeah. it has shaped me up. Um, yeah, yeah. That I, was one of the first things I learned. Well, that's beautiful. Exposure to the outside world. Uh, it's can, I'm so glad yeah. that there's, there's certainly challenges, but like you said, we actually so much alike than we think. And it takes, you know, studying abroad and living with people to know sometimes to find out. And you yeah. still a whole year with a diverse group of, of folks. And sometimes even our, con our country mates, we can be, we can even think they're different, but we get to know folks and, and say, oh, by the way, so we actually kind of the same people. We have different languages, yeah. maybe different <laughs> foods we like. And now we start to learn from each other and love other culture. Like I say, yeah. uh, it's in college, I came across Nigeria. I mean, first of all, I grew up in, I'm in Cameroon. So Nigeria is right there. I'm so Nigeria, hi. So <laughs> uh, I always talk about Nigeria, but I never met a Nigerian, you know, I wasn't. And then when I came to study okay. and got to know, it, it felt like we knew each other, but I knew more. So, um, but it's, it's beautiful to hear that. And, and that, and even to your students, you will share that knowledge and you, you, you will encourage, you, yeah. you told me in a pre-interview that you, uh, you want to encourage your student to have the same experience. Yeah. That's yeah. I, I, I have actually been doing that. You know, most times I, um, I try to mentor them, to tell them that, that, look, you can still have something better than what you've gotten in Nigeria. Of course, there is nothing wrong in obtaining a first degree in Nigeria, but, you know, going outside can expose you more. It will, it will give you a better exposure to understand better what you have learned mm -hmm. in the class. You know, you, you practice them you have a first class hands-on on what you have learned and then you expose yourself to other um you know things like I, I have told you before like the culture different kind of culture and people the food the environment and so on and so forth so I had a, a student right now he has graduated from the, um, the UK I encouraged him, though finances was actually part of his challenge, but during the, the COVID period in 2020, he got a university in um, the UK mm -hmm. that slashed their uh, tuition fees. So he was able to raise half of it and then he traveled. So um, when he actually sent me his graduation video, I was impressed. Uh, and I'm like, this is the kind of people I want to build. So I, I have been able to encourage someone and um, he achieved his dream. Right now, um, part of his dream is to move into the US to pursue his PhD. So I've been doing that a lot for um, most of the students. I sometimes I actually look for links for them to apply for scholarship. Of course, we have a good number of scholarships that is actually flying here and there. So these are the opportunities I give to them. Sometimes they they, they also um, send me. Uh, sometimes they send me a recommendation, so I write a, a reference letter. To um, for them and they yeah. can use to apply um, to the school. So this is what I've been doing for the students. I, I usually encourage them. It's not all about chasing to be first class. You mm -hmm. know, what, what value have you built over time? Yes. Okay. So what is what are the impacts you're going to make after graduation? So I tell them a, 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 a lot of, um, uh, you know, I encourage them. I tell them that it is not just um, having a good degree, be the best that you can, add value to what you have obtained, and also be better than whatever thing you have seen. Mm. You have seen me, you have seen all the other lecturers, try to be better, improve yeah. on what you've seen. Yeah, yeah. so improvement I give Wow, your students are very blessed to have you. Uh, and how do they call you? How do you, how do your students call you in class? I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Miss Josephine. <laughs> Miss Josephine. <laughs> okay, Miss Josephine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. hi to uh, Miss Josephine. <laughs> Hello. And then uh, uh, for those who don't really know about by talk by um
Okay. Hello. I can hear you now. Oh, okay. Sorry, I got a phone call. Um, so, okay, I would, are you, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Okay. That's, that's the problem with recording, but uh, I got disconnected for a minute. I will make it work. All right. Um, so anyway, I was uh, asking, uh, I kind of lost my train of thought. Um, yeah. In, in now, okay. So for those who don't know what biotology is, what, how can you describe it? Hello? 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 Oh, sorry. Oh, it's my yeah. phone. I got, I got a phone call from my husband and got disconnected, I guess. Okay. Um, okay. I'm back. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, it's fun. So, for those who don't know about biotechnology, bi bi oh, I don't know if I said that right. Bi biotechnology. Biotechnology. Okay. <laughs> biotechnology. I can't yeah. that one. For those who don't know about <laughs> biotechnology, could you please tell us know a little bit about that and what does it entail? I mean, and what kind of course are you teaching? Like, what do you teach in class? Mm. Okay. So, and um, first of all, uh, the courses I teach in class, it's plant biotechnology, mm -hmm. um, genetics, molecular biology, and bioinformatics, genomics. <laughs> um, I've taken plant breeding uh, and um, we have a, an entrepreneurship course also that I handle as well. So these are the courses, though I don't take them alone. Most times we have about three uh, lecturers involved in each of the courses. So, Biotechnology is actually the improvement of um, biological materials. Of course, biological materials could be plants, animals, um, maybe parts of them, or humans as well. Okay, so you use biological tools to improve them. Okay, um, for instance, let me just give an example. If you have a particular plant, tomato, for instance, and this tomato, uh, um, if you get a tomato in the market and you keep them for three days, okay, it, it gets rotten. So biotechnology has the ability to actually improve on that tomato to extend the shelf life of, of that tomato for, mm. for um, um, okay. So that is what, um, in that area now, is, you improve that particular um, tomato to right. have a longer shelf life. So that is what biotechnology does for us. It improves the biological materials that we have. It can be plants, animals, and all that. I don't know if you've heard about gene editing. So this time around, they can remove a particular gene, okay? Mm -hmm. And then it is a, a, a desirable gene, okay? okay. Wow. Uh, so this is, yeah. It, it encompasses um, every other part like um, the, the tissue culture. So you can culture any part of living organism, especially plants. So any part of that uh, um, plants, plants part have the ability to regenerate into the full plant. So for instance, if I have uh, um, a, a particular section of a plant, Okay, mm -hmm. and I have the necessary um, um, media or medium for it to grow. Okay, so I'm going to culture it in, in, in that plant and it's going to give the full um, organism of, of other plants. Okay, mm -hmm. so this can also be used to improve plant materials. We can get virus free, uh, free plants from it. We can get... Um, other plants that have desirable um, you right. know, qualities like uh, high yield, um, high yielding plants, disease free plant, pathogenic free uh, plants and all that. Okay, so this is what biotechnology does. It improves um, um, what we already have in place. Yes. For us, whatever thing that is already existing, it helps to improve it. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just trying to explain it so that everybody can understand. Okay. <laughs> I hope you do. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then how many students yeah. uh, how many students do you teach i don't know um like, first of all for those who are not familiar with the nigerian university system how many do you, do, yeah. are you dividing semesters uh yeah four we do. yeah so we have two semesters first and second semesters so um you know in most cases uh students range from 200 in a class to about 300 or less so it varies based on the session and yeah. how uh, they actually are admitted That's so the, the, the current session yeah so the current session we're actually graduating now is about 157 students that's the the the, the fourth year students that are going to graduate is about um 157 then the um third year students they're about 300 so uh, but i've taken larger classes you know when i started i had to take um a faculty course so uh, i i i was not just taking it it wasn't just the department that i, I am land science that is offering the course okay so i had um, other departments about seven of the departments so they were about two thousand students <laughs> and then i was very tiny I imagine how it felt like you know looking so small not as big as i am now you know standing um in the presence of about um you know two thousand students because we had seven departments you know that we you were offering. teaching two thousand students yeah it was a large class a very wow. large class you didn't have assistants mega assistant. mega you didn't have yeah, teaching the course reps not um assistant per se but we do have the the course rep that are a representative of the class so what i do is that um or what we do normally is that we tell them to um you know set the class for us make it ready so for that kind of class we normally need a megaphone Okay, so that everybody can actually yes. hear yeah. what we're saying. So we, we ask them to get everything in place for us. And um, there we went <laughs> to take care of the students. Oh, and I'm, I'm very interested. I'm very interested. Yeah. Uh, and then how many, how long are your, you know, your session? One session is three hours or you might as well. Okay, so we, we have a minimum of an hour class, then the hour. maximum of Two uh, hours, yes, two hours. So most of the classes are usually what an hour, but if it extends, then two hours. Then it can right. also be for, uh, let's say three times a week or two times, depending on the credit loads of, of that course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> myself, I'm an university professor. I cheat online, like you know, communication courses. So I, I, I think I'm getting too interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kind of move forward so we are not you know we're gonna just uh try to wrap okay. up here um because so far we have a great great you know great conversation getting to know you as a little nigerian yeah. girl saying growing up <laughs> bros having supporting family members your parents mm -hmm. and your spouse and now you are working on your phd um that being said i have one question uh you can of course you can say briefly what you think that uh, will be the issues that uh, African girls and women, or Nigerians specifically, girls and women are facing, and how you think we can resolve them. And and if you have an organization you would like to share, um, that would be a great time to do that too. That you 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 lead. Yeah. Um, you know, coming uh, from Africa, one of the things that actually happens to women is that we are often underestimated, sometimes due to the cultural norms or beliefs. So it 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 builds into these African girls or African women, and then it hampers their their dreams. Okay, sometimes poverty could actually play a role. Yes. You know, so once you come to a background that can't actually um, suit your education, then you are already limited. So one of the things, poverty and lack of education, but um, that's not just um, the problems we are facing. The other one is this gender-based violence. Yeah. You know, it, it, it has played into the system and it has affected us 
the women yeah. negatively. You know, uh -huh. we face it both in the family, in the workplaces, you know, with, within um, uh, the male folk, but that does not mean that we should actually, you know, um, in, interact with them. But yes. this is one of the challenges that we are also facing. And the other one is uh, female genital mutilation. That's one, though it is not, um, you know, usually talked about. It's not something that we talk about. And sometimes it, it is built into our culture that we find it difficult to exempt ourselves. We don't even have a say because this, this, this is what happens. Yeah. So these things affect the women negatively you know and um so in in africa if the woman is not facing uh, uh, you know uh, the um, female genital mutilation is either she's faced with um lack of education literacy yes. she's having that kind of challenge yes. or she she doesn't have a voice so mm. these are the challenges but we we need to actually come out of this if the government can actually uh, put in place policies that can actually alleviate these challenges, then it will help because uh -huh. the government has a role to play uh, in our decision making. Uh -huh. So if they do that, it's going to uh, go a long way in helping us. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you. So that certainly these are a few of the challenges. That few of the challenges. Yeah. Think, uh, mm -hmm. And I like your solution having more of the government. Uh, involved and I want to say and that's my opinion that yeah I think African government need to uh, um, empower there's now well a lot of us well educated on the continent you know master in biotechnology and all kind of degree lawyers doctors okay. and uh, I think that having more women involved in the government and that can help the government to also find those solution it to be okay. too long because it was like 1 30 so we were talking about by uh so we are back with mr zige and uh, we are so so we have so we learned so much about her um and how, how much she is a change maker what she did in her life for herself first, because it's important that we actually do what we want to do show to our life our choices that we change our life before going to say change someone else and how she crossed that bridge she got her degree and she's working another one uh mrs Ige, um or miss josephine like a student call her i <laughs> truly work on you know getting another student and more who are you know god's willing get them where they need to be in their life maybe young men or young women so we talk about also how um, the the issue we have uh, on the continent uh, may include uh, poverty, education for girls, and uh, violence, gender-based violence. And this is an important topic that we're gonna have uh, in the very in the nearest future on our platform. So watch watch for this for Mrs. Ige to be back and talk about that with us. So it was such a pleasure to having you, Mrs. Zige. Do you have anything else you have to share with us today as we are wrapping this session with you? Yeah, I you asked them um, a question if um, I actually have an NGO or something. Yes. Well, it's something I actually um, want to um, you know, start but with time. Like I said, setting your priorities. So at a certain stage, very soon, I'm hoping to do that. You know, um, I'm, I told you before, like I said, that I'm going, I'm interested in women and girls uh, and climate change advocacy. So this is what I hope to, you know, um, actually establish in the nearest future so that this, uh, um, I can actually achieve that dream, okay? I wish that women can be educated, women, girls, can be educated, but in general, youth, yes. okay? We can be educated because um, we need that education, we need that skills, we need uh, um, to actually build up our confidence. Like you said, if we don't build ourselves up, we can't help the society. So how do we help our society we don't we can't just allow the government alone you know to take up the challenges so that won't help so we need us the continent need us our country 
um, need us, okay, to solve these problems that we face every day. So this is why I am hoping that um, very soon I can actually do this for my country, yeah. for my um, continent. That's great. So you are on, if I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, you are working on creating an NGO. Yes, of, yes. And then when you do, please come back and tell us more. We'll love to hear more <laughs> about that. So yeah. we have a lot to talk about in the nearest future. And know you're always welcome and in this space. And if you're young, you know, not even young, an African woman or you know an African woman will be a good uh, guest to this show, Me the Changemaker. Uh, it's amazing. I'm Mrs. Zige. Please. Uh, uh, reach out to reach out to me um email me um there'll be information yeah. in the description below once again thank you so much for your time today mrs zige i enjoy uh getting to know your story as you are changing uh your life better your life the life of your loved one and the life of others thank you again for stopping today for yeah. this show. meet the change maker thank you dr chess <laughs> you're welcome so let me <laughs> let me make sure i stop this uh, recording oh lord okay. do you